Welcome to the Funny Farm. We're gonna do one last demonstration. This, this right now, probably about five minutes. All right. Welcome everybody. For those who don't know me, I'm Lori Zaleski, the owner of the Funny Farm Rescue and Sanctuary. I do live in that little yellow house. It's a party starter. Yes, I live at the Funny Farm. Uh, we are doing our demonstration of our two mega esophagus dogs. Tucker, this one's yours. Jesse, he's gonna go around the back. Tucker, come on. He's like, mom, you haven't fed me in so long, I'm delirious. No, you stay over here. Jesse, you go in that one, that's yours. Go ahead, Jess. So they're gonna back in eventually and sit up. There you go, up, up. And these two have mega esophagus. Tucker, today? We, we close it for Tucker. <laughs> Come on, get in. We're gonna eat. He's like, I don't believe you. He says, do you really have food for me? There he goes. Backs in. Sits up. Okay, Speedy Gonzalez here. All right, so before I introduce, so we have... Tucker and Jesse, he, Tucker is four years old. Jesse is a year and a half. This is little Caesar, Farley. We, he has a book about himself. Puppies are a little dog who's very naughty sometimes. He goes after Jesse. And we have Gunner back here. Gunner, come here. He's like, I'm coming out. He, he wants to be the cleanup crew. And this is Matt Reeves. He is the author of our children's books. We have three of them. We have Adele the Diva Chicken, who lives in my house. She wears a poopy diaper, because you cannot potty train a chicken. I have tried. <laughs> Farley the Funny Farm Dog, which he was right out front. Oh, he's right there. He's like, I'm walking through the crowds. I'm working the crowds back here. Um, he is like the farm manager. He takes care of all the babies and makes sure there's no fighting. If the roosters fight, he'll break it up and come right back. And he used to be a herding dog. So I had to train him not to be a herder. I'm like, these animals have been through too much. And then we had Chucky the Miracle Dog. This was the dog that had mega esophagus, my very first dog. A woman from my work, I'm a graphic designer and photographer at the FAA, and this woman bought him for $600 and she said, Lori, I have this dog and I keep feeding him and he keeps throwing up. He was just a little guy, look at how adorable he is. She took him to the, I said, you gotta take him to the vet. She did, she came back to me and said, it's mega esophagus. I said, mega who? I never even heard of it. So what that means is that his esophagus is enlarged. So this is his head, his neck, his esophagus, that's his stomach. So basically he is starving to death because none of the food, if he eats like a regular dog on all fours, the food just sits in his chest. So I said, well, what are you gonna do now? She said, well, I got my $600 back, I'm gonna go take him to the pound. And I said, well, you know they're gonna euthanize him. Oh, no, he's really cute, you saw the picture. I said, no, they're gonna euthanize him because he has a condition and nobody's gonna want that disabled dog. So I said, just bring him in to me to work tomorrow. So I did, she did, and I brought him home and I had to teach him how to sit up in a chair, a car seat. You guys wanna sit up front, go ahead. Okay, so um, I had to teach him how to sit up in a chair. He would jump in and then sit up. I would click him in and then eventually I would have to have him fed through a bottle, a baby bottle. And then he had to sit up for about a half an hour. And even though he sat up for that long, he would still up chuck his food. Now it's not throw up because it's not coming from his stomach, it's coming from his chest. But his name is Chuck, short for Upchuck, <laughs> because he would eat and then Upchuck automatically. These two don't seem to have the condition as badly, so they very rarely um, Upchuck their food. But Chucky was every time he ate, he would Upchuck, and he would eat about 14 times a day, and we just couldn't keep it down. I took him to the University of Penn and all these different vets, and everybody said the same thing: euthanize him. They're not gonna, he's not going to live over six months, and I said. Oh well, if he doesn't live more than six months, then he's gonna have the best six months ever here at the Funny Farm. They run around, they play ball, they, they're not on leashes, they can go wherever they want. We have the 15 acres fenced in, we're up to 25, but right now they have the 15 acres running around and the vet said, it's okay, even with the chair, he's not gonna make it. And I'm like, that's okay. So they said, all right, 
so we did. I got a, um, a Bailey chair. This is named after a dog named Bailey. It is um, our own design here with the holes so their feet can go out or their tail. They're not claustrophobic. And Chucky lived to be five years and a month. He wow. went up dying of uh, a heart condition. But because he had all these other types of different things wrong with him. And it's from interbreeding. So his mom and dad were probably, you know, distant cousins. So it's trying to keep the line of a German Shepherd strong is what causes this. And he would take care. We have Cowboy the Goat. You probably saw him today when he was probably trying to steal your food. He had a broken leg and he made sure that he was adjusted and good with people. And people came from all over. You can see before we had our special stage, we used to sit on top of a picnic table and show people. And a whole bunch of people learned that, you know, I have a dog that throws up too. And they figured out that it was because of mega esophagus. Some of them don't have very severe cases. But he wound up having an operation and then he wasn't allowed to play. And he was a frisbee and a ball guy. So that's all he ever wanted to do. So when he died, he wound up, and he actually survived that last surgery and lived to be a little over five years old. So he is now in my front yard where there's the tree. We have a dogwood tree planted in his memory. And when he passed away, I had a lady call me and say, you know, I have a mega esophagus dog. Can you take him? And I, it was the hardest thing that I ever had to do was, you know, was deal with his death other than my mother's. My mother's was the first hardest and he was definitely the second hardest. And I said, no, I, I don't think I could do it. And when people would say, I lost my pet and I just can't do it again, I would get angry like, there has, there's somebody else that needs to be rescued, go help somebody else. For the first time in my life, I felt what other people felt. I was devastated. And I said, no. Well, they wound up coming to the farm and brought him. Can you say no to that? No, I couldn't. So of course I said yes, and then here he is now. We're over four years later, even though the vet said he's not only gonna live six months, he is four years and hardly, I mean, he, at night he lays flat, so he does up chuck a little bit almost every night, but the vet looks at his weight. You wouldn't know, when people see them in the box, they're like, why is he in a box? It's a, can he walk, does is, is he have to live in the box? They are only in here to eat. It's just like their high chair when we were kids. So they don't know that they have a disability. They think they have a really cool chair and the other dogs don't.